Hello everybody, um, I am a fellow student who is working on a project on this topic which is a type that causes adversity and we chose this topic of anxiety disorder. We have picked this type of subject for it was quite interesting to us and something that is something that could be fully aware of. I'll get to that uh, point later into this video or audio and when I mean us, I mean like I do have a partner with me but unfortunately he is not able to work with me on this um, audio recording so video so let's start with our basic fundam fundamentals uh, so we all know what basic anxiety is the common effect in our lives that we go through it's the thing that always contracts us to stress through urgent and important activities like for projects or tests that students go through like what we used to when we were younger or even presentations on those speeches all that type of things that causes us to turn our minds on so basically, it's the, these kinds of things that causes our brain to break down from our useless activities. And it kind of makes a reminder to you to always be focused. Um, focus on big things that need to be uh, completed. Um, and the thing about this, it always comes up in your mind always. It's constantly with you. And it causes you to stress and be nervous about your everyday situations because... It's a bad effect, but it's good as well, as it forces you to focus on the important stuff, and it kind of prevents you from procrastinating. So, everyone gets anxiety from their types of situations, but then there is where there is anxiety disorder. What is somewhat of a mental condition, or I don't know, it's more psycho psychological, I don't know, psychological problem, I don't know, it's more of a mental condition. Um, anxiety disorder, or AD, or generalized, generalized anxiety disorder, GAD, same thing. They're worse than just regular anxiety. And it was constantly with you. It's very common to you in like every day. Their symptoms would contain like increased breathing, heart, heart rate increasing, um, sweating, of course, trembling, shaking weakness, fatigue, difficulty getting up or staying asleep. There are also some physical symptoms that could, you could have and actually get from regular anxiety which, when it's severe. Shortness of breath, uh, the feeling of being smothered or choked, chest pains, nausea, abdominal distress, dizziness, unsteadiness, lightheadedness, same, all same thing, being, or becoming faint, or kind of just, you could say, uh, something when you're being detached from like your environment so you're away from reality and then there's all your fears going through your mind and all that there's also numbness tingling sensations chills hot flashes all that kinds of symptom, um, symptoms there was one the common question that was asked uh, that i found online uh what, which was what causes anxiety disorder or i'll call it gad and how would you avoid it well anyway according to my research um these types of causes for GAD were from psychological environment like psychological problems environmental medical and sometimes with the genetics with the psychological complex uh, I'm guessing it's basically with the issues that's involved with that person such as probably traumatic experience or experiences or incidents or something that they've just been living with all day or everyday situations like for the scenario uh, I guess a child abuse a son and a father well, a father abuses a child, a child, like, goes to that every day, he gets used to it, but he's always in fear with his father. So, even though every time he gets in trouble and he still gets abused for it, as much as he's used to it, he's still in fear over that. So that's what I think it can mean for psych psychological with the conflicts. Psychological conflicts. Uh, some medical problems that also cause GAD would be such things as depression. There are some medical problems such as heart diseases, depression, if you would count that. I mean, I guess that's another mental condition, but it's also a health condition at the same time. Um, heart disease, diabetes, seizures, drug abuse, and other etc. etc. All those other things that could happen, cancer and all that, I don't know. I mean, it's basically something that causes adversity, and it could affect you on... It affects sometimes your daily life and sometimes causes that. And there's genetics. Um... We can actually, from our genes, from our parents, the genes from our parents, uh, when our parents have fears or anything, phobias, I'll get to that with the types of 
um, there's actually types of different types of anxiety disorder. They're kind of similar or exactly what it is. I'll get that later. But I'm saying like phobias from the parents. They could when a parent's like in a fear of heights when they have a child. Um, that child could gain that gene of having that same fear, and yeah, it's just kind of passed down. So that's kind of the conflict that happens with genetics. Now, as for avoiding these types of things that cause GAD, well, I would say if you were to avoid these things, it, it depends on the scenario or it depends on how your life is right now. And if you did, avo if you did happen to avoid this, you kind of have, uh, how would you say, good life, really. I mean, because what I would think of, I mean, there are causes such as work, like too busyness from work that always there's always too much work from something and you can get all stressed out from work and then yeah that causes it there's also school there's also school which is unavoidable for children unless you're homeschooled or something like that and yeah that like you just avoid schools and actually just be homeschooled it's not like all that so basically yeah you would have a happy life for having that kind of thing if you were to avoid GAD but other than that I would say you kind of don't have anything to you can't avoid it really. The difference between regular anxiety and generalized anxiety disorder and all the other types, which are basically kind of the same thing, with the same effect. Um, with regular anxiety, basically you have a fear of something, and that's just, or you're kind of stressed out, stre again stressed out, or you have a hard time on something. Now with the generalized anxiety disorder, it's increasingly far more significant to that fear and it becomes a huge distra distraction over life and it's more and you're more focusing on it you're focusing on it to avoid it you're avoiding it like mainly and forgetting all about life so you would just so you would have to deal with it but again with the scenarios uh maybe you had a traumatic experience like i said earlier you were sad or scared you were having trou trouble sleeping for a few days but then you're conscious back to normal you're having normal life, <laughs> no more scare or sadness, it just became a re regular day to you again. What happened was just the past, and you'll never remember it probably again. But then there is anxiety disorder that makes it far more significant. It causes you to remember those traumatic experiences after probably months or years ago, but it still haunts you. It, like With flashbacks, you get nightmares from that same event or something even that's relevant to that event, it haunts you every time. So in conclusion, if you haven't already got it, it's mm, an anxiety disorder is far more worse than regular anxiety. So here's our problem we, that, that we have. Anxiety disorder is a common disorder that is affected all across the United States. And there are treatments to them. However, there is no exact cure to it. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, you can't cure it. You'll be gone with that thing forever. That condition forever no but there is a way to treat it and to make it better you can maintain it and make sure it doesn't go out of hand what i mean by that is like okay so by the more time you have this again in our scenario it's hard to talk about it when you're not being when you're not being detailed about it again you have a fear of something it's not like that you have a fear of something and basically you don't deal with it and you avoid it and that might feel pleasing to you because you're avoiding it in the past few weeks but and you think you're like progressing better but it's the opposite it's really worse you're kind of just making your mind being reinforced to that fear saying that you need to avoid that you, you never never look at that you don't be near that it's it makes your mind it makes your fears stronger and it hurts you even more anyway the treatment that we found out were the two main ones were counseling and medicines the side ones are also books like books people who wrote books about it um, helping with your um, condition there were I think yeah there's some stuff online that you could read that also helped you but that, other than that I don't see other things doctors will help recommend the treatment you would need to get through they will prescribe medication if you need medication they can also advise you to see somebody for counseling therapy or whatever to help you solve this um, and solve this problem now the problem that's happening is that many people don't go through with treatments. I mean, people who have any of the types of anxiety disorder that I explained, they don't wish to take medication or get therapy because of their personal opinions. There are people who don't get help because they don't want to have the feeling of being called mentally ill as an air quote. 
and they don't want to have any impact on their career, you know, because like if you were to be someone who's m mentally ill, like I say, again in air quotes, basically people around you who m know that you're mentally ill, they will have the thought of thinking, probably this guy cannot, guy girl, whatever, this person cannot do things that they would regularly do, what a regular person could do because they're mentally ill, they cannot contain themselves or they're not, they're not able to maintain this type of work or anything at all. And that could be very impact, it could make a big impact on you, on your career. Say you are at school and you have anxiety disorder. I mean, if you really think about it, it could um, really mess you up. Um, it distracts you from school and it really hurts you on your education and it causes you to have, have that loss of self-esteem and also basically you're not able to learn anything or do anything because it's basically like this with a disability when you lost a leg you can't run anymore like if you were an athlete and then you mess up your leg you now don't have a leg for it, or it's broken and all that you basically can't run anymore the thing you do for a living i mean like if you're that um i don't know you say athlete who runs a lot what they call track I don't know, I forgot, they do the Olympics, or, I think, yeah, they do the Olympics, I don't know, I forgot, about, I forgot the sports they do for that, I don't know, I think that's a bad example, but anyway, basically, it's like with disabilities, you're not able to do things that you were used to do before, and that causes a big impact on you, so it's the same thing, but mentally. Now, there is some people who also have anxiety disorder, but they don't believe they do, or from their lack of thought, when they say they don't need help, when they really do. You know, so basically, it's kind of like one of those stubborn people who really, when they really need help, but they don't say it. But you could tell from what they what they're doing, um, body language, I guess you could say. You could see that they really do need help, and you really just gotta be generous to help them. Now, for people who lack a thought, there are that is one of our reasons. Now, for the ones that aren't fully aware of anxiety disorder at all, like they literally don't even know about anxiety for some reason. I'm surprised if they don't. And they don't find out until when it's really bad, like, because they have the condition and it's been happening to them for uh, like months and months and months, even a year or so. And it's been so bad until finally they like look up online and they find out what it is finally and they're like, oh no. It's already so bad to them that they really can't, I mean, they could still get help, but it's gonna be harder to get, it's, get that condition treated. And then there are also thoughts that they'll never get better at all. And it will stay ill for the rest of their life. That saying, I don't know that little, I don't know that, that little feeling people get sometimes when they're always completely, they always think completely useless. They always feel helpless when something happens to them. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of feeling sad. It's kind of like those people who want you to feel sad or something. I don't know. Sometimes those people want attention. Some of them are people who really is just like they can't handle it. And finally, there are the people who distrust their doctors. Hard to believe for some reason, but when sometimes some people are unwilling to tell random strangers, another air crow, their problems, when that's the key to helping them. I never had this therapy before, but I'm pretty sure if you're gonna have something to help, like if you're having somebody, a professional, to help you, you're gonna need to tell them about your life. And it kind of sucks that some people who have that thought of distrusting the doctors and not telling them anything about your life, it's kind of weird how you would think that at all. I mean, he's a doctor, I mean, I don't know, I guess you have a very private life or something. Now, I want to talk about the other problems that, that kind of have like this point. I, I don't know how I could say it. I mean, like, it's not like a personal opinion thing. I mean, it is, but it's like focused publicly in an area or like in cities and towns and all that, all the, I don't know, rural areas and all that. There are two problems that do need to be supported. One of the problems were, are when there are people who have work, like the, this is the job they have that helps put food on the table for them or their families. And basically they can't possibly leave off to seek attention or to get help because they're too busy. And plus, I mean, like sometimes that's our that person, that's their source of getting money, that's their source of getting paid sometimes when they're having like, I don't know, they're having poor financial, when they have very fi big financial issues and they're very poor, they really need, that's when they need to get work done and they can't just leave and take days off to get help. Basically, if you don't know, you would need to, 
get help, it will take like probably a few weeks or so, and that would take too long to get off of work, and again, that person might be the source of bringing food on the table or ha supporting shelter, like having paying the bills and all that. So basically, it would be hard to um, solve that. It'd be hard to help a person when they are uh, when that person is somebody who like uh, has to pay, has to work or to get paid and to live off a life. And another thing to add on to that, it's also hard to find professional care, those care centers you find around your um, area where you live, the city or wherever you live at. You know those professional cares, sometimes it's near you, sometimes it's a little far from you. It can be hard to find professional care when it's very far. I mean, again, like I said, when you have work and you can't literally leave work and have to drive so far away to get that treatment because, again, you would, for stuff, you would have to leave work and then you have to travel far a, a long way to go get help and, you know, that would be much of a struggle. Really, I mean, if you really put your mind to it, put that in your shoes or whatever, I don't know. Now, the second problem is, of course, insurance. I kind of said the thing about the, um, that person was poor and all that. And why not by poor? I mean, of course, I mean poor, like, to sustain their um, bills, uh, again, food on the table and all that. But also, if they probably have insurance or not, pe some people don't have insurance. They have, they really have to live off with um, paying med uh, medical bills with no insurance, and that costs a lot of money. Um, so, yeah, that's also, that prevents them from getting the help that they need. Again, about when they lose part of their limbs or, like, they lost their leg and all that. Again, with that scenario. Um, anyway, the stubborn people should ignore the problems, like I said earlier. If they do, it's not going to get better at all. I mean, if it did, well, good for you, but really, that's not a logical thing to do. And with my personal opinions about those people who distrust the doctor, and I'm going to say this, the doctor, and what I mean by doctor, I mean, like, when they're getting um, um, psychological help, I mean the doctors that that are new to you, that are unfamiliar to you, don't just trust them, don't be suspicious, don't be like very careful of saying what you say to him. I mean, because he's really helping you out there. And sure, you're probably getting s s like your private information of your life to, again, what they call a random stranger, but it is, it does help find out about your problems. And now here's for the people who aren't aware of anxiety disorder and their symptoms. I mean, if you're literally watching this somehow, or you read my website, somehow i mean like if you're full, fully unaware of it but i'm mostly talking about um people who do know about this and somehow they're watching this video as well thanks for watching anyway um basically if you know somebody who isn't fully aware somebody like your neighbor and all that and they're not aware of this condition and you see it through i mean sometimes you can see this condition if like if this person i mean you can just tell about when a person is in a bad situation and you can tell from their body language the symptoms I gave out the symptoms that I gave out that is very similar to the person you know that's having um, problems then yeah you should probably help them out and also this goes to one of our points here on this whole conversation it's one of our points to this whole topic is to show awareness on um, this condition because I there's been a few there's been a few people that I know personally that doesn't know about this at all sadly they don't even know what anxiety is although anxiety disorder is not heart disease or cancer or any other um fatal heart, um health condition or disease into a human although this awareness of anxiety disorder it's not heart disease or cancer or any other fatal heart um health problem or, or disease it's like not as worse than anxiety disorder at all it's what people a lot of people think because they really um, ignore the fact about people who have anxiety. They literally like, oh, okay, he just has that. Doesn't matter. I mean, people have cancer. We, we should care about them. I mean, only breast cancer and all that. They show all that awareness. So I should be focusing on that, not just anxiety. It's not that big deal. That's what they think. It's not a big deal. But if you really put that as a regular person would think that it's um, anxiety disorder is not as important. It's just a common thing people go through, even with just regular anxiety, which is true. But at the same time, it's think that it really is nothing to be. Um, it's it's nothing to be thinking about. It's not to be aware at all. It's not as bad as all those other diseases like bre um, breast cancer. And I don't know. Other, I don't know. I can't name all the diseases, but all these other diseases that's happening that's very bad. That's happening to their families. That it involves death. 
Or there are some people who just think of a person who has this condition and just thinks of a as them as a sad person who doesn't even like who doesn't like go from their mind at all and doesn't feel the good things in life. Well, the thing is, it's more than that. Anxiety disorder is a serious condition. I mean, it's not as high up as cancer and all that, but it's something. It's not something that can be easily let go at all. It's not like how we do with regular anxiety. In, in fact, regular anxiety is already harder on some people already. In fact, if it was if it happened to them, those people were having a hard time on that, and it's even worse. Anxiety disorder doesn't affect you just emotionally. It also affects you physically, and it could be something that is not feel good to you. Now, with anxiety disorder, it could be, I'm pretty sure it would be even more stressful. It will cause even more stressful things to a person. It will make them feel tortured in life, like I said, to me it did feel tor like torture sometimes. Although it did cause me to focus, is a, there is times when I'm trying to relax in a weekend, I don't relax at all. I've always had that thought of my project and its due date. And basically, it was a very stressful moment. And I'm pretty sure other people would have that same feeling too sometimes. But anyways, people who have anxiety disorder, they suffer from this condition. And they will, when eventually it can be caused as depression, or it could be backwards depression can also cause anxiety. I mean, I'm not going to get into that, but that can happen too. And eventually, it can actually end up in suicide. People, I mean, I haven't got anything about that being in suicide. I haven't got any um, report of that, but I mean, if you really think about it, if it really causes depression and it happens to that, I'm pretty sure it would be suicide. There would be a suicide thought happening in a person's mind and actually done it. People suffer as much as the people who do with diseases and medical problems. They suffer as much as they do, and it should be as important as them, and it should be fully aware to people. We need service around areas that isn't close to any other places with professional care. Also, we need to have more access to care for people who doesn't have the money or insurance to get help. So that's all we have to say for anxiety disorder. It's not very severe, but it's quite something that needs to be fully aware. And it's serious in a certain kind of way. Again, one of our reasons for making this is so we can call out um, about anxiety disorder and its capabilities and if you know someone who has the symptoms like we talked about you should inform them about it and if they don't listen they're stubborn and all that you should still help them out be generous and help them no matter what even if they um even if they ignore what you say you can still help them there are tests that tell if you have anxiety disorder or not or you can even go to a per uh, doctor nearby and um have them ask questions and I don't think they give out tests or anything, but they kind of ask if you could have this condition or not. So that's all. We will link our, all our sources and also that test on our website down below. And if you have any questions, no other problems or solutions that we didn't talk about or had an experience with anxiety disorder and you would like to share with, with us, please contact us on either our website, on the email. And also, I do... Um, I do know another video on YouTube that also explains very, very thoroughly on anxiety disorder. I find it very informative and it's part of where I got some of my information. So go check that video out. 